Welcome back guys. Uh, hopefully we understand the waste spark ignition a little bit. And uh, we're going to talk about a crank sensor now. Now this crank sensor you know is one of the key elements in uh, with any ignition system that's out there. And I figured we're going to give this a good work over. You may, want, you may probably know more about Hall Effect sensors than you ever wanted to know. Alright, let's get started on it. Hall Effect, what does it mean? You've heard it uh, probably referred to as a magnetic switch, Hall Effect sensors. Uh, no doubt. There's different types of them out there. Usually it's like three types. The one that we're going to be talking about is the one that's going to be creating a off-on square wave signal. Yes. And there's another one out there that will put out a linear output voltage, analog voltage, based on the strength of the magnetic field that is sensing. And it also can also look at which pole of the magnet or magnetic field that is looking at, that, that being a south pole or a north pole. Okay, who come up with this idea? Well, this started back in 1879 with Edwin Hall when he was going to Johns Hopkins University in uh, Maryland. And he was working uh, on his PhD. He's a, a physicist. And he discovered the principle that if you take an electrical current, pass it down through a conductor, and a magnetic field is perpendicular to the electrical current, there will be a voltage developed across the outside of that conductor. That sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook. <laughs> now let's break it down so you can understand it. Now here's what the guy did, from what I understand. He had a very thin sheet of gold foil, okay? Gold being a very good conductor of electricity, I guess that's why I used it. And he had a glass sheet. Imagine this is a glass pane. Now he took this here, gold foil, and he laid it right up on top of the glass sheet. Now he took an electrical current and he passed it down through the gold foil. Okay? Now there now the gold now the current that's coming down through the gold foil, imagine that most of it pretty much is coming down to the center. That makes this easy to understand. Okay, so we have the electrons coming down through the center. Now we're going to take a magnet, the magnet or electromagnet having a magnetic field, we're going to put it up here. This here is perpendicular to the current going down through the gold foil. Now that's up there, perpendicular, 90 degrees to the electrical current. Now what he discovered was that with this presence of the magnetic field, that on the outside, you put a voltmeter out here on the very outside of, the, of this here gold foil, there is a voltage developed. Well, this whole principle, in honor of him, is called the Hall Effect. Now you know how it got the name. The voltage that's developed across here on the outside is called the Hall Voltage. Now what happens is that as electrical current is coming down through here and it's going right through the center, let's say with no magnetic field here, now when we put this magnetic field up here, that's going to call the electrons to start to curve and go more to one side, okay? Now what's going to happen is, electrons are going to be over here on one side. That's going to give us a negative charge over here, electrons being negative. That's going to pull the electrons from the other side. It's going to be giving this a, uh, a deficiency of electrons. So this is going to be creating more of a positive charge. So, in effect, that magnetic field is actually bending those electrons and pulling them off to one side. Think of it like this. You know how you got your CRTs, your cathode ray tubes? You remember the TVs? Probably you don't have many of them around now. Think of a black and white TV. You got one electron, electron gun. You're shooting out electrons. Now, the electrons in the presence, without the presence of a magnetic field, the electrons are shooting straight out, hitting the phosphor behind the uh, screen on the picture tube. But in the presence of a magnetic field, this here electron stream is going to bend, it's going to move. And so that's what those coils on there for, is that deflection coils causing the electron beam to sweep back and forth, move down the screen, and it's all in the presence of that magnetic field. So it's, think of it like that, you know, where the electrons get pulled to the side, excess electrons on one side, Gives you positive on the other. So that's how we got the uh, 
That's how we got the Hall effect. All right, so we know that the Hall effect sensor is sensing a magnetic field, and in the magnetic field, it's going to create a Hall voltage. When the magnetic field is gone, there is no Hall voltage. So before we start digging and in, looking into the internals of the Hall effect sensor, how it works, how the pulses are generated, maybe we'll just take a look at the physical sensor and how that field is interrupted uh, and that voltage is created. All right, here's a, here's a sensor. Now, I got this sensor just to show you guys too, and I, I'm pretty sure that the problem is not going to be this here sensor, okay? But the sensor here mounts on the front of the engine to the right of the harmonic balancer, all right? Now, there is four pins in here, okay? There's one pin is for the supply volts positive, one is for the ground to supply to the, to the sensor, which comes from the ICM, same for the uh, B plus voltage. And the other two pins are the signals, the outputs coming out of the crank sensor. One of them is called an 18X signal, one of them is called a 3X sync signal, okay? Now, and we'll, we'll talk more about that. Now, if you look right up here on the top side, you can see there's two slots, all right? This is where the interrupter rings passes through, breaking and opening that magnetic field. This one over here on this outside to my right, this slot here is for the outer interrupter ring. This is the one that's going to generate the 18X pulses. And this one over here to the inside, on my left over there, that's going to generate the 3X sync pulses. Okay, so here's what in effect it is. This here has one magnet generating, uh, one magnet's got two sensors built in here. This magnet is right here in the center. This one magnet is shared between two Hall effect sensors. Hall effect sensor is located over here. The other one is over here. So, so what's happening, you can see that as the interrupter ring comes through the slot, it's going to be, it's going to be blades and windows. It's going to break and open, you know, that magnetic field. So the magnet is uh, going to be sensed, the magnetic field is going to be sensed by the Hall effect sensor. Okay, this interrupter ring. What are we talking about there? All right, let's talk about that a little bit. Now, here, here's the interrupter ring, one of them. This is the 18X. This is representing See, I got it. See, guys, I drew that up for you. You even, <laughs> even painted it and made it look pretty. Okay. This here part that's sticking up, that's called the, that's called the, um, the blade, okay? The part inside here, the open area, is called the window, all right? So we have the blade and window, and you can see it alternates, right? Can you see that here, and this is what it does. This is behind the harmonic balancer. This is the outside ring. Of course, it's a round and a circle. There's 18 of these now. So there's 18 of these, and when I turn the crank one time, I've generated 18 of these square wave off ohm pulses. Now, in effect, this is what's happening, okay? Now this is my outer interrupter ring. This is where the 18Xs are at, so the Hall effect sensor on this side is for that. Can you see that right now, there's my window. Here's my magnet in the center, shared between the two sensors over here. So as I'm sitting right there like that, then what's happening is that magnetic field can get sensed by the Hall element, Hall sensor, okay? And, and that means we're going to have a Hall voltage developed across it so we can amplify it and drive an output transistor and turn it on and pull it to ground. Now we'll go into that a little bit uh, coming up next about far as in how the circuitry looks. Okay, so the crank rotates and now we have this here blocked, okay? So now this here, this here blade is blocking that magnetic field. Therefore, the Hall sensor don't see it. There's no Hall voltage, the voltage is zero, therefore there ain't nothing to amplify, and in turn the transistor is not going to turn on, so now the voltage is going to rise up to the supply of volts, okay? So there's that one. Now we also, as I mentioned, we have another signal that's generated out of here. Now this one is called the 3X, 3X crank sync signal, okay? Now, what I want you to notice about this one, the other one, if you notice, was all the same, okay? 
You don't see any difference. So you can imagine that the square wave pulses are going to be pretty symmetrical. It's going to be off. It's going to be on, off, on, on. Okay. But take a look at this one here. Do you notice how on this first first slot there, this here window, you notice how wide it is? Okay. Now take a look at the second slot. It gets a little wider. And take a look at the third slot. It's even wider. There's our three revolutions, that our three slots that's turned in one revolution. And then the pattern repeats over on the second revolution. So we're going to get three of these here pulses per crank rotation. 18 uh, pulses on the other one per crank rotation. Okay? Okay, now going back and looking at this here, these pulses in here, or these widths of these windows rather, this is pretty much about what a square wave is going to look like. Up here is going to be high, and down here is going to be low. Then it's going to go high, then it's going to go low. Now, what these two signals are doing for the ICM and the PCM is it's actually telling it the RPM of the engine, and it's also telling it where is the crankshaft located in this rotation. All right. Now, we have three pulses. Right, three square wave pulses per crank on this one. Now what it's doing is it's using a counter inside the ICM and it's also in the PCM. And what a counter does is it looks at the positive edge going up, that's called a leading edge, or it could be looking at the trailing edge, that's where it's falling down. Okay, my guess, let's just say it doesn't matter whether you count on what went on the rising edge or the negative edge, you're gonna still get the same count. So if it's high, Here's our, here's our falling edge, falls, right? So it's falling, count, there's one pulse, goes up, falls, count, there's two, goes up, falls, there's three. So there's our three counts. Now, if we take these three pulses per crank rotation, and if we divide 360 for one crank rotation, 360 degrees, divide that by three, look what we got, 120 degrees. So it's also using this by the ICM along with the 18X signal to know when to fire the coils and later on when we look at the waveforms, I'll show you how it knows which, which coil to fire, okay? Now by the way, this here, this here is used also uh, when I, I say the RPM and the crank position, same as the 18X, okay? This one here once you get past 1200 RPM, then it starts looking at this signal here, this 3X signal. That's what the PCM is going to be looking at. But 1200 RPM and below, we're going to be looking at the 18X signal for our RPM and our crank position. Okay? Now, if you notice, like I said, we got 18 square wave pulses per crank. If we take 360 divided by 18, that's going to give us 20 degrees. So we'll know within 20 degrees of where the crank is located at.